Okay, welcome, welcome. I uh, decided I'm going to give everyone a very quick rundown on how to do the LoRa training with the new Fast Trainer. So this video is going to be instructional, but I'm not going to give you like step by steps because ultimately there's always a little bit of figuring out you've got to do on your own. So this image here was created with a LoRa and the open pose for ControlNet. So ControlNet is a new uh, feature for Stable Diffusion 1.5. We hope it'll come to for 2.1, but we're not going to be talking about that today. So while this is here on the screen, and that's cool, um, it's not what I want to talk to you about. So first thing I'm going to do, um, this is 2.1. So the first thing I'm going to do is open it up, and we're going to say, take a look at this. So firstly, you want to go to the Linna Cruff. So there's links for this in the Civit AI thread on Laura Dream Booth. So beforehand, I was recommending that people use the Laura Fine Tuning Collab. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a new, easier way of doing this called the Fast Coya Trainer. Now, that is also a collab. And before you go crazy, okay, you can do this in half an hour for a small data set. And it's less than two units an hour. You do not need a premium GPU. And because it takes less than an hour, you might actually just get away with it. So um, I've also got a good friend with me here called Kappa. He's going to be asking me questions occasionally. So he's going to act like you guys watching this if you if i missed anything leave it in the comments these videos are unlisted so they won't be like getting advertised or anything you are one of the chosen few i do not put my videos out and monetize them that way okay so basically this will be updating all the time you can tell because you can look here you see these the ipynbs those are the updates now it hasn't been updated since i last used it but if it had, then I would repeat the same process again. OK, so the first thing that I would do is I would come down to the fast trainer and I'd click on the opening collab. Now, you would need a membership. I got the Pro Plus because I use this a lot. You probably won't have. There's certain things you get with that. You get 500 units a month and you get AFK. So I could close the tab, turn my computer off. It's not going to affect my training. OK, if you just have the Pro tier, if you only want to get 100, 100 units a month, and you don't get the AFK, all right? Now, uh, you, there is a, like, not subscribed version where you just buy units, but I recommend getting one of the memberships, all right? You, you know, you can do freebies. If you're going to do freebies, you may as well just buy a good graphics card because you're going to be annoyed constantly for several different reasons, like you'll lose your progress, whatever. Get kicked off, can't get a good GPU, all of that, all right? If you go with the Pro Plus, you can even go with the A140 gigabyte G, uh, VRAM if you want to do a really big job and you can stick the batch rate up to like eight and it'll do everything eight times faster than anybody else can. Everyone's always complaining about speed. That's the solution. You get more VRAM. Anyway, we're going to be talking about doing this at less than two units per hour. And like I said, if you've only got like, I don't know, 40 to 60 512 by 512 images, you're probably only going to need like one unit to do your train. OK, so if you get 100 units per month, that's 100 models. You know, what are you trying to do? Do you know what I mean? If, you, if you're just working on something and you've only got a couple of things, that's more than enough and it's pretty cheap. So, you know, consider consider that. But we're not going to get hung up on costs. I just wanted to cover that quick. OK. And yeah, you can't actually, it doesn't, they don't actually guarantee you anything, okay? This is a research platform and there's a lot of scientists on here doing like protein folding and software development and machine learning, sort of all that stuff. So what we're using it for is sort of outside the realms of what this system was put up for, okay? So while we're able to use it, don't expect them to be like giving you priority or anything, okay? Okay, so we're going to be looking at the Koya, fast Koya trainer. And this is by Linacruf. So just to recap, all right, we went to the Linacruf GitHub, Koya Trainer. All right, you can find that link in the Civit AI um, sort of resources thread. And then 
Fast Koya Trainer. So into Colab we go. And this is relatively new. It hasn't been out for very long. So uh, fe there's features. All right. There's limitations. I'm not going to bother reading them out to you because you could probably did, you could do this yourself. I don't want to waste your time. All right. So ultimately, this is the easiest and quickest way that you've been able to do this without a big GPU. All right. So the first thing I recommend you do is immediately save a copy in Drive. You might say, why? Well, because these things do change from time to time. And this way, if you are working on a big project, you can guarantee that you are running the same thing and it hasn't changed halfway, like something didn't break. All right. It's, it's just a good practice. So what I'll do is I'll just put the year, the month and the day with a dash. All right. So now I know that this copy was done on that date. So if I come back to this in a week and I can tell from looking at the update, oh, actually, there's a newer version. Because it might be that the newer version doesn't work for what you're trying to do. These are very complex things. Anyway, not trying to waste your time. So, first thing you do with these is you click the buttons. I'm just going to run down this without, without clicking anything. You click the buttons, okay, in order. So we'd mount the drive. It's going to come up and ask us for permission to save the files to G drive. We're going to say yes. And then it's going to go to uh, general uh, comfort gonna, we're going to fill it out first remember okay fill it out first okay so this one has only got two buttons that's why it's fast all right so we're going to want to basically fill this out now you might think to yourself well what do i what the hell do i put here okay so here we got native training and laura right are, are we're going to be doing laura that's what we're doing we don't need low low vram because you're going to have a 16 gigabyte v uh gpu for this one uh, you're going to do install track X formers. That's for real. We're going to say here, my Laura, you can put whatever name you want there. Okay. For the training, uh, directory, once we have signed into our G drive, we can open this folder and there'll be a list here. One of them is going to say G drive. You can open it up and then you can right click, uh, copy path on the folder, which contains your images. So you do want to upload all of your images to a, Google Drive folder first. Consider using Google Drive desktop, then you can access things in your normal Windows Explorer, right? Makes it nice and easy. You don't have to mess around with the web interface. Okay. So, like I said, right click the folder so you find it, you open up here, navigate to the G Drive where you put your files, right click, copy path, okay? And then you paste that there. That's where you put your image folder, okay? You don't need to do this part because we've got it on our G drive, right? We already did that. Okay. So it, it doesn't really matter. I tend to use 1024 by 1024 images because it will rescale them to whatever we want. Uh, some people put in different aspect ratio sizes. I crop everything to 1024 and then I choose either 512 for, for 1.5 or I choose 768 for 2.1768. Nice and easy. Now, if you're doing style training, you don't need to select this part. Okay. Don't need to do it. Right. You can just use the dream booth method, though, if you do want to have a trigger word. Okay. Now, all of your images would have this trigger word in the file name. And you can have a text file, text files, which match the image file name. And then the uh, text file can contain more keywords. All right. So that's what we call captioning. Now you can have this do the captioning for you with AI, but I do recommend going through your own images and actually tagging them yourself. Okay. So I'm being asked, what's the fundamental difference? Does it affect image quality? Well, ultimately, yes, because if you're teaching it a concept like SKS frog, it knows that it's a, it's the frog and it focuses on the subject because it can detect there's something in the image. Whereas if it's a style, yeah, then it's going to look at the whole image. So it's going to be a little bit less intense in terms of its attention to what's inside the image. So there are different, there are, it is different, but all you really got to think is, do I want to have a trigger word that makes my style work? Because some Laura's, you can just activate them, okay? Uh, and others, you have to actually use some kind of trigger word inside the prompt, 
Now, the network strength with LoRa is always more important than the weight of a token that you use to trigger. We tested that pretty intensely. So don't worry about it too much, but it just means that if you have a LoRa which has a trigger word, you have to use that word to make it actually show up in the image. Um, if you don't, then you don't need the trigger word. You just need to say, I want to use this LoRa and set the strength and it'll blend it in. So if you're going to be doing a style, you probably don't need a trigger word with LoRa. Okay. And if it's an object, you probably do because you're going to use it contextually. Like uh, if say you're making a fantasy sword and you got 10 pictures of a very particular sword, like He-Man's sword, for example, and you got like 10 images of He-Man's sword, right? And you're going to say, uh, I would say just, I would just say He-Man's sword, to be fair. Because um, <laughs> it's a whole, it's, it, that's what it is, right? Um, but I'm not going to muddy the waters too much, okay? So basically, you should already have your folder on your G drive full of your images. And you should already know I'm going to be making this with a trigger or not. Okay. That's what you should already know. So this is going to be the name of the Laura when it's finished. This is going to be the path to where the images are. And then this is going to be your token to trigger it if you want. And you don't have to. Okay. Now, for the pre-trained model, you can go and get this address from Hugging Face. OK, so any model that is on Hugging Face, you can put the URL here and then you can put the uh, model name here. So all I've done is I've literally, in fact, you can cheat a little bit uh, by going to like, say, say there's another another collab <clears throat> and it's got like a drop downs. See, I had a previous version of this where I just stole the uh, but it's just a URL. So you just go to Hugging Face. In fact, just go to Hugging Face. Get the link, okay, chuck it in here, and then you can start training on top of that. Now, you're going to want to get the FP32, and it probably makes sense to use the pruned. Now, I do recommend using the base, so that means the Stability AI 1.5, well, wait a minute, the Runway ML 1.5 pruned as your base, okay, or the Stability AI 2.1768. Or 512 if, if you're wanting to make it into an in-painting model, okay? Doesn't really matter which. So the point is, using a clean base is really important if you've got a really good data set. But there's nothing to stop you training it on top of things like anything if you wanted to build off of somebody else's model. These are definitely options for you. But just remember, you're going to do better training with FP32, and you probably want to start with the prune, okay? But like I said, I, I always use 1.5 base from what Runway ML. So there's, there, those are the guys that released it. Uh, or in the case of 2.1768, I'm using the Stability AI release. Okay. So we put the URL in here and then we take the file name like this and we copy that there. Simple. Super simple. As for the VAE, some people swear by different VAEs, okay? Now, personally, I just use the Stable Diffusion VAE, all right? Uh, but that's a personal thing. If you want to use Waifu because you're going off of anything or anime or whatever you want to use, that's fine. You can even customize this, okay? So I don't want to go too off the rails here, but if you click at the bottom, you can click Show Code. I'm not going to do it now. We'll do that at the, at the end. But basically, you can click show code and you can add more things to that drop down list. All right. Um, it's actually not that difficult. But if you're just using this basic use, just go with this one. Stable Diffusion VAE.pt is the best one in most situations. A lot of people aren't making anime. So I would get the Runway ML. In fact, you know what? Let's just do that real quick. So we'll go hugging face, hug, hugging, hugging face. All right, and then we're going to go to uh, Runway ML Stable Stable Diffusion 1.5. There it is. Files. All right, and there it is. 1.5 pruned safe tensors. So see this blob main. All right, download. So if I just copy the link address from the from there. All right. 
and then uh, that's the original. We can get rid of that now. So I'm going to copy that in. So there we have, and it says you can see here resolve main. All right. So we know that that's correct. Copy that. Put that there, and that's it. We're done. And we can use stable diffusion VAE. Cool. Now, if you have not captioned your images, and if you have not got text files in your training directory, you know, your folder of images, you can use the um, the tagger and you can use blip or you can use either or here. All right. I don't do either because I do my own captions, but there's nothing wrong with using these captioners. All right. So I've already done my captions. So I don't need to bother with that, but you can do that. So custom tags, I never use this section either. So we're going to skip it. But essentially, this is more stuff for people that use the auto tagging or they want to add a custom tag. So, for example, if we have not bothered to tag our images, we might do something like and we were using the dream booth method. We might do something like that. Append. So it might add the SKS frog to all of our images for us. So we don't have to, you see. This is all just trying to do work for you, right? But if you've already done the work, you don't need to do any of that stuff. Okay, cool. So we're going to move on from this section and nice and quick. Just being asked a question. There's a bad relationship with VAE due to the fact that uh, Laura models extracted from anime do not work with VAE. Yes, yes, it's true. It's true. I mean, look, I don't bake VAEs into my models, so I don't really like to. All I know is that you're going to get nice results and you should always start somewhere and then experiment from there. So if you make a nice model and then you find that you want to try different VAEs and you're thinking it's going to mess it up, then just go with none. OK, but like I said, this is a, you know, there's a learning curve. I just want to introduce people to how this works. <clears throat> and to be honest, I don't even use any of these. If I'm doing anime, I use the FLK8 Anime 2, which just came out. So it's not even here. Anyway, right. And there's nothing to stop you from saying none and then putting a different one on later. So I'll put it on that for now. It's fine. All right. Now we're going to get to network dimensions and network alpha. Now, originally, they said to make these match, and I've had good success doing exactly that. You might find different advice. Everyone's got different advice. I'm just going to give you the basics that will work. You can always experiment and do different things. All right. So you can reduce this. OK, I've seen people go to 64. I've seen people go to 32. I've seen people go to 16. I've seen people go even smaller. But you've got to think about it like a thin like a sh finely sharpened blade. The more you sharpen your blade, the easier it is to crack. And yes, I am going to use an analogy, which is a bit crap, because at the end of the day, you've just got to experiment. And what I found was the smaller you make the Laura, it's like chipping off the block. Eventually, you get a really small thing that can't really take much weight. So if you were to try and stress that, it's going to kind of fracture or melt or fall apart. Whereas if you had more network dimensions, it's going to sort of take a bit more of a beating. And that's more for when you're making the images. OK, it'll make more sense when you come to make the images. If I was going to give you an example, I'd probably have to show you an image. So let me just get an image here. So let's take a look at this image here real quick. OK, so we're just going to go off the rails a little bit because we need to sort of explain something about this. So this might not be the greatest image, but there are many of them. There you go. She's a bit better now. So in this image, there are many influences from a whole bunch of different things. So if I go into the actual text file here and just take a little look at this. What we've actually got here, let's get bigger and big. Let's get even bigger. So what we've actually got here is glitch stick, which is one of my Laura's. OK, so what we got here is we got glitch stick V15, 1.5, 256, which is the network strength. And I've set it to 0.6. This is the network strength. So when you're actually that, that there, that's the positive prompt, all of that. OK, so when I've invoked this Laura, what I've done is I've loaded the Laura called glitch stick V15, which again, 256 network strength. 
and then I've said 0 0.6 for the for the sorry for the network strength. This is the network dimension which I trained. Okay, so 0 0.6, right? And then I put a token blend of 0 0.5. Now you, this doesn't do as much as normal token blending, but it does still have an effect. So like I said, I'm trying to give a little bit of an influence, right? And just just for the point of reference, the car picture in the background here is actually using glitch stick as a um as a base so this is using glitch stick as a base and glitch stick is just a bunch of glitched images super glitched like super rgb glitched images that i made in audacity but i'm not going to like i say i'm trying to stay on the script here so <clears throat> we have anime because obviously we want anime colon one means it's going to always give us one right and then we've got one woman falling. That is actually my prompt. And then this came out of a random token. A group of travelers journey through a magical desert to find a hidden oasis. And then the location Hokkaido, I type that. So basically what we're talking about here is um, this is coming out of a wildcard, which is a bunch of text files with different stuff on different lines. I just type in underscore underscore uh, wildcard and then it's going to fill that in for me right okay um i'm being asked about you don't use commas at all i do there's a couple commas it's just a force of habit it doesn't matter it just makes sense to me when i'm reading it back um right so one woman falling that's the actual prompt then we got a randomized piece all of these tokens get fed into the model and the lauras so then we're going to go crazy eyes, crazy face. Those are triggers for this Laura crazy expressions. All right. And then we've got WLOP style. So we've got the trigger word for that Laura. And then that one is running at 0 0.6 strength. So we've got 0 0.6 there, 0 0.6 there, one there. And then we've got a 0 0.8 on my big Laura, which is all 108 of my model styles in one uh, V15, because I never made them. They were only made for 2.1. So I've got every single model here in one Laura. We put that quite high to 0.8, okay? And then what's gonna happen is all of these tokens in the prompt are gonna trigger that. And then also we're running it on top of Dream Shaper ver version 3.31, okay? And, uh, do you know, it says baked VAE, but I was using the anime VAE and it seemed to work really nice. We're also using Clipskit. But the reason I bring this up is because if you were using a like small LoRa, you can't really go lower than 0.5. It's going to start breaking and giving bad images. So you want to not chop too much off. I mean, it's cool to make small LoRas, but if you make them too small, they become a bit like a pane of glass and they'll shatter. Uh, I hate to keep using broken analogies because you can stretch them too far, but it's a bit like a thin Laura. You can stretch them too far too. So it's the same thing. Um, I was making uh, a bunch of stuff for a, a pose set called um, uh, Jojo's Bizarre Pose Helper lately. So I was using style of Hirohiko Araki. People were asking me how I got the pictures so close. I didn't actually use a Jojo model or a Jojo Laura. I just literally asked. Dream Shaper for style of Hirohiko uh, Araki san. So there we go. That's pretty much it. Uh, there's a few other little tricks in here, but I don't want to get too bogged down because, you know, you'll spend hours. And we're talking about Laura training right now. I just wanted to cover, like, what the deal is with the network strengths and why that matters. But pretty much as a rule of thumb, what I do is I say, if you're going to be using like, I don't know, up to 100 images, 128 is fine. If you want to have up to like two, 250 images, I'd say 256 is probably more realistic. And if you're going to go up to or over 1,000 images, definitely you want to go with 320. Yes, it's going to make the LoRa bigger. These ones tend to be about 200 megabytes, no, about 140 to 200 megabytes. Still a lot smaller than two and a half gig. Or five gig though, so there you go. Um, the other
The author recommends matching the alpha and the dim. But you can experiment that with that if you want. I do recommend, though, if you're going to use 256, then go with 256. Now, we're going to be using less than 100 images for this imaginary train that we're not going to do. So I'm going to just leave it on 128. OK. So now the unit learning rate. 1E-4. What does that even mean? Well, let me tell you. OK. If I just type this into Google, they're going to tell us. All right. So 1E-4, scientific notation, 0.0001. That's what that is. OK, so if you see somebody say that, that's what it means. Now, you might think, OK, so what's 5E5 then, genius? Well, it's going to have an extra zero and it's going to end in a five. So it's zero, 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 five. So an extra zero and a five. OK, so that's that's what it is. All right. It's like a way of doing really small numbers, a mathematical expression. All right. So sometimes people get it the wrong way around. This is smaller than this. That's pretty much all you need to remember in case you want to change things. OK, but these are good values. You don't need to mess with these. Same with uh, this one down here. This one's a good value. It's fine. You might think, oh, but it's different than what I've seen in other training methods. But this is different from other training methods. Well, it might be. I don't know what else you've done. So anyway. <clears throat> Adam 8-bit is cool. Uh, which optimizer do you think is best? Well, to be honest, I haven't had a chance to test them all. All I know is that Adam 8-bit or 8-bit Adam has been amazing for me for a long time. I would love to do a comparison on all of these. And I do plan to do that in the future. But at the moment, I can't speak on the other ones. So that's a good question. He's just asked me, which optimizer do I think is best? I don't know which one is best. But I recommend testing them because the thing is, say I did a test set and I did a photorealistic test set. It might these might perform differently depending on what images you're trying to teach. So it's not really fair to just do a test on all of them and go, this one was best because that just means that they were best for your Im your images. It doesn't really mean like I bet that these have strengths and weaknesses. OK, that's my prediction. Each of these has a strength and a weakness, and I don't know what they are. Adam W is only for AMD cards. So this is what I mean. I couldn't I couldn't tell you. So that would be a strength of Adam W. You know what I mean? It can it works for AMD. So that would make sense. But then we're using Colab. So it's kind of irrelevant. So I'm not really sure why they would uh, make an AMD. I don't even think do they even have AMD cards in Google Cloud. It's a good question. All right. So anyway, I have always used 8-bit Adam as a memory optimization. So I kind of that's in my wheelhouse. So I'd leave that one alone. Uh, as for optimizer args, if you're a learner and you're new to this, don't don't mess around with stuff you have never used. <laughs> You'll probably just break it. All right. Because I know that if I started messing around with this, I couldn't tell you what's going to happen. So, pff, yeah, by all means, experiment, but make sure it's not something important. Uh, otherwise, you'll just frustrate yourself. So leave that one alone. OK, same way. Right, we've covered the learning rates. I would say go with linear. OK, constant was fine, but I I had great success with linear. Some people tell me cosine is nice. All right. By all means, test it. All of this stuff is about experimentation. Take the same images, just change one thing. So come once you've made your linear set, come back and do it in cosine mode and then let me know. OK, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to know what your uh, I'd love to see the images that you've made. OK, so there we go. So like I said, I do recommend recommend linear <clears throat> over constant. Uh, I actually put the learning rate warm up to 200 and I had a great time with that. Now, I, I don't know why it just it was just a it's just something that I did. Uh, by all means, you can leave that at 250 or you can put it up to 300. All right. The, the, these are the sort. This is the sort of experimentation thing. But what, personally, I put that to 200 and it was fine. Like I said, I'm using less than 40 images, so I don't want to have it too high. Um, if you have more images, maybe you should have more steps for the warm up. Ultimately, it's up to you. Right. 
But if you're brand new to this, and this is what I'm aiming these at, 200 is fine. So uh, learning rate scheduler args, leave it alone. Unless you know what it is, or you've read something somewhere that tells you to put something different in, leave it alone. Okay. We've used the 1.5 model. So we don't need V2 and we don't need V parameterization. That would be for 2.1768 uh, as the base model. Okay. So we would have put that way back up here. We would have put 2.1 and 2.1 there. And that's how it's going to tell which one it is. Okay. As it's a 512 uh, base, 1.5, we're going to leave this resolution on 512. And what it should do is it should resize my images for me behind this UI, behind this interface. So you can set it to 640 and you can set it to 768. All right. But so if you were doing 2.1, you'd put it up to 768. Personally, I'd leave it at 512. Nice and easy. Flip org usually mirrors your images by horizontal mirroring. So it's going to flip them. So it's going to double the image set size, but it's also going to give you sort of, you know, it's going to be able to draw things both sides. Okay. So if you had th everyone's facing left, now you can generate stuff that's facing right. So this is usually quite nice, but we don't need this. We'll leave this off. Now you can click here to read all about offset noise. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's amazing. And this is partly why I'm recommending everybody change and start using this method. So if you, uh, Kappa, was asking, me about, was asking me about this, he's already got many ways of doing offset noise. But this allows you to train offset noise into 1.5 and 2.1768. Um, even though there are other ways of doing it, this is a way of doing it too. So you can put 0 0.1, that's what I recommend. If you want to experiment with different values, go ahead and read the information here, which explains exactly how it works. It's giving you better control over contrast, high, uh, extremely dark or extremely light images, which uh, the models don't always do so well with. It will also create unique images. So if you're used to what the images are going to be by seed, and then you retrain that data set, it's going to be different images because it's going to start with different noise. All right. Cool. So we've covered that. Now, this is really cool. Don't skip on this. This is something you should definitely do. It's probably about a week old. It's going to make much more coherent images, nice details. Uh, you're going to love it. So now training batch size. Yep. Yep. Cap is saying it's really cool. They added it so quickly. It is indeed. This is one of the reasons why I do like these guys. I've been following the Koya group since last October and they are trailblazers. So Train batch size we're going to get to now. Once you actually sign up, if I actually started this, look, it says I'm actually on. It says I'm on. Am I using time up right now? <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm using up time right now. I don't know how, but I'm using time. I don't know how. Maybe I clicked a button by accident. Anyway, so the point is, uh, what you would do here is, uh, that's actually a good point. If you want to see what you're using on this interface here, you can click this button. And it will open it up and it will tell you how many units you've got left. It will tell you how many units you're using and how many active sessions. Because you might have accidentally opened a second session. And then you can click manage and you can terminate the one you're not using. Because you don't want to be using compute units that you're not actually using. Also, you can monitor your RAM situation. If it goes up too high, I'll show you how to solve that in a second. And if you run out of GPU RAM, which you shouldn't do, you can also solve that too. Uh, you probably won't run out of disk space, though. I did like 4,000 images in a big train, and I never had to worry about that. Um, but certainly, if you go to runtime and change runtime type, we've got different types of GPU or TPU, and then we've also got premium there. That's how you would get the over 16 gigabyte class of cards. And then we've got high RAM, which you might need if you're training an ex an, a very large data set. Okay. But I will say that Google Drive doesn't like having thousands of images in one folder. So it's not the best for making big models. It's fine for doing this, but if you've got more than a thousand images, you might just lag out Google Drive and it'll just time out and crash. All right. But certainly if you're doing hundreds or less, which is what most models are, I mean, typically Laura's and Dream Booths are sort of less than 60 images and sometimes only about 15 
I've read some places that Laura doesn't like to make um it doesn't like it doesn't like to make uh models from less than 16 images i think somebody said but i've certainly done with 10 okay where i've been trying to get a very tight style like you know like a character with a very specific uniform that they wear you know that kind of thing see the more images you have the more it can variate anyway let's not get into the weeds so train batch size basically means it's going to process four actions at once okay so if it was going to show the image to the ai for learning once every second which is going to be quicker than that but if that's what it was this will do it four times a second so that means that two hours of training is done in half an hour which is partly why this is so good because i found that you're only using about 10 gigabytes of ram um on four batch size with this particular technique so it is faster that's why it's fast koya okay um there are other methods which do different approaches to this and they don't go as quick um this has been optimized really nicely um uh, which is why i'm doing this rundown for you guys so when it says max train type it's max train max train epochs max train type is 20 data set repeats is 10 okay so it's going to ramp up the learning rate until it gets there and it's going to go through those epochs super fast. OK, uh, I'm always picking FP16. I'm always picking FP16 personally. Some people say BF16. I've never used it. Nothing wrong with it. If that's what you want, pick it. If you know that's what you want, use it for the save epoch ratio. It's going to go save three. So what it's going to do is every three epochs, it's going to save a version into your uh, computer. So let's just quickly go to my hard drive here. Let me just get this set up. So if I go to my Laura and Laura and Where'd it go? I must have put it on a different hard drive. Hold up. I probably won't even cut this bit out, so let's just keep the conversation going. Do, 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 do. Say tenses. I don't think I would have put it in there. I'm pretty sure I would have put it in there. Well, anyway, regardless, what you're going to end up is you're going to end up, so we've got 20 every three. You're probably going to have four or five, something like that um and you're going to see uh safe tenses versions okay of your laura popping into your google drive ah that's right they're on the google drive that's why i can't find them they're in the google drive Doi. so they're going to be in training directory so when you use this method you're going to go to your google drive and you're going to see it says right here training directory and then you've got a bunch of stuff here output and it's empty because i've already copied them off haven't i but basically you would have had like four or maybe five checkpoints at various different epochs as it goes through to the maximum amount all right so the more images you have the longer it takes generally speaking but it's going to show each image 10 times as far as i know um it's going to go right the way through your data set I always pick clip skip two because it's been recommended and x formers is definitely something you want to have but it's already there so you don't need to take it away and there's no need to so shuffle caption doesn't really bother me all right so there it is that's everything now we've gone through all this stuff now so the only thing that's left to do you'd go mount the drive and then you'd go start the training simple as that it really is as simple as that. And uh, in fact, let me just show you what I meant quickly. So here we go. We're going to mount it. And we're going to pick yourself. We're going to say yes. And then in a second, it's going to show up right here. And then I'm just going to pick one of my data sets folders. And this used to be a lot more involved, a lot more complicated. There was a lot more setup. Okay. Um, Nope, you don't need to do any of that. So Kappa's saying, 
Uh, do I understand correctly that there's now no need to add the number of steps to the picture in the folder name? And the and the que and the answer is nope. It does all that for you. This is this is a bit like uh, the fast dream booth that I used to use to make checkpoints only for Laura. So what they've done is they've streamlined the collab to do as much of this stuff for you. Now we're going to have a look at the, the last thing we're going to do because we are running up on 40 minutes and this was supposed to be fast. Turns out you can train a Laura quicker than you can explain how to use the collab. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to literally, we're going to do, we're going to run through this real fast because uh, this won't take a second. So I'm just going to go into my drive and we're going to scroll past all the secret waifu folders real quick so no one sees them. Nah, there's none here, guys. So we're just going to go to the Kappa training data. That's right. Kappa has the access. Here's the codes. And we're going to find something cool. Something cool, which maybe I haven't even done yet. So how about we pick Punk Star? Mm, no, we're going to do Space War because Space War is super cool. So Space War has, let's have a look. Space War has 100 images, pretty much. Has 100 images, all right? And uh, you'd normally have to do so many. So what I'm going to do is right click, copy path. And then I'm going to type in here, I'm going to say space, space war, and we're going to say dash, it's 100 images, so I'm going to use 256, uh, space war 256, and it's going to be uh, V15, this is just for me, so I know what the hell's going on, um, chaos, yeah, we should have done the chaos, okay, so content training, so now I'm going to copy that path right there, so space war 1024, and then we're going to use the dream booth method all of these images are tagged space war now this is a style model not an object model so i don't need to do any captions so i'm cheating a little bit so the instance is space war we've already done the 1.5 we've got the vae we're not going to use the tagger we're going to change this to 256 because that's my choice there we've gone over 100 pretty much so we're going to say 256 but it's on the borderline of needing to be really uh you could get away with 128 with this but i'm going to say 256 all right we're going to leave everything else because we already set linear here we already put the warm up to 200 so that's fine we don't need this it's at 512 we've got the noise offset of 0.1 we've got the train batch at four we've set everything correctly so that means all we got to do is press go now, the first time you do this, it might seem a little overwhelming, but honestly, all you really had to do was mount your drive, put the name in, put the path for your data set, which is on your Google Drive anyway, okay? Name it. If you want to use a, uh, if you want to use a, a, a token, put the name of the token in, all right? Uh, make sure that this is the correct base model which is just a question of going to Hugging Face and pulling it, you could use anything that you like from there, okay? Auto captioning if you want, because you're lazy and you didn't do that, but I recommend doing it yourself. Keep going. Select your dimensions. I would recommend 128 and 128 if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, leave everything the same. Pick linear. If it's a version 2 model, 2.1, check this and this. Put it to 768 for 2.1768. Leave it at 512 if you're, and you don't need V parameterization if you're on the version 2 512 model, right? Set the noise offset, highly recommended. Um, and I think, I think that was it. I don't think we've actually changed anything else. And then fire it up. And then what it's going to do is it's going to run through all this stuff, okay? And it's going to start making our model. Now, that should be it. However, and uh, if you've made it this far, congratulations. We're at 45 minutes now. So the only last thing I would say is sometimes you'll have a little bump in the road. And it will give you an error. And the last time it did this to me, I had to make a small correction, which I'm going to include for you guys. 
Now, you might not need to do this because by the time you watch this video, you might find that actually they've already updated it and you don't need to do this. OK, but certainly a couple of days ago, I had to do this. So I had to do this. Now, if it throws an error in a minute, you'll see. So what we're going to do is wait. In fact, I'm going to show you how to do it because it doesn't matter. So you'd Google or search on ChatGPT with the error, whatever it is, your whatever, or ask in a forum, whatever it is. And then they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, do this. And you're going to think, what? I don't even know how to do that. OK. If you come down to just under here, if you put your mouse in between the two sections. See that line lighting up there? If you just click on code. Now, I know that this is a fix because I've used it like in the last couple of days. Basically, there was a problem with missing, uh, missing information, missing, missing software. All right. It's in Google Drive. It's not the fault of these guys. It's in the Colab space. There's no uh, TensorFlow and the fast API version was not there. So it might be a different one for you. Often they'll just say, oh, just do pip install and something. All right. With Google Drive, you've got to put an exclamation mark in front. That's why there's an exclamation mark. It's part of the Google Drive code. OK, so if this fails, don't panic. Go and get the code. Create a code spot. Paste it in here. And then you click run. And then run again. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's partly because uh, Cap is saying this is for large working video cards. Yeah, it's the thing is that um, most people don't have uh, 16 gigabyte uh, GPUs. Most people have like 8, 12. Uh, but if you have a 24 or sorry, a 20 or whatever it is you've got in your GPU. And if you were using a premium GPU, because I have done this to see how quick it'll go. And I think I managed to get it to go at... I think I managed to get 10 batch, which basically meant the whole thing was done in like five minutes, which is pretty impressive. Five, five or 10 minutes, um, uh, which was pretty impressive considering it used to take hours. Um, but but yeah, certainly I'm just saying the basics. So if you get a fix, that's how you do it. Don't panic. Just create a code area. This is partly why we do a copy as well, guys, because then if you had to fix it, you keep your fix, right? If you're just using someone else's collab, you know, you can't, you can, you can edit it, but every time you restart, those edits go away. These will stay here. And so will everything I put in. All right. Um, like this, which I just put in. Anyway. So if there's a problem, which I don't, it should have probably, I think it would have broken by now. So I think we're good. But basically, if you see this here, um, I probably don't need to run this. And you probably don't need to run it either. So I'm not even going to put it in description or anything. It's just uh, an example of how I had a problem, I had to Google it. I got the advice from, I think, like Stack Overflow. And then I've come back, I've pasted it in here, I've ran this, and then I've run this, and it works. Joy. So let's have a look and see what it's doing. It's still actually preparing. It hasn't actually got there yet. Ah, there we go. Look, there's the error. Same error. So it might actually break in a second. Uh, basically, it was. Uh, lib and lib 64 dash nvidia something to do with tensors so i bet there are many ways to fix that but that's how i would do it so it's going to cache the latent now it's going to do late it'll cache the latent that's going to take some time looks like it will be done very soon um, and then if it has a problem i'll run that and then i'll run it again so it's like it's not the end of the world all right let's have a look and see how we're doing we've got eight nine system ram is growing so uh let's just put that there okay now i don't even use any of this stuff down here because by the time this is done wow it's blistering look at that it's blistering through it's going to be done any minute now so this is preparing my images and loading them into the latent space which is pretty cool and then it's going to start training and like i said it's going pretty damn fast okay Yeah, uh, Cap is saying he likes the movement towards tensor models, which accelerate generation dozens of times. That's a good point. If you add the premium, obviously, you can pick the tensor processor. Now, I don't bother with them yet. 
but I'm pretty sure that, as Kappa's just pointed out, that's the way we're going to be headed, and they are obviously quicker. Uh, you just have to make sure that you're running a project that can actually do that. So here we go. We are there. We got our uh, CUDA is set up. It looks like they must have fixed it since I last came on here, because it hasn't broken yet. So we've got 4,900 steps, 20 epochs, and 245 batches per epoch. That's pretty cool. Yes, it's running. So there we go. We've done it. So in about... Seems to be running a bit slower than usual. I think this must be a bad estimation because it was much quicker than that last time I did this. But then again, it's doing 4,900 steps. I think this is bogus. You probably have to actually get a stopwatch out and, re and record it yourself. We're running 10, gig 10 gigabytes of RAM. And it's 100 images as well. That's pretty big. Like, usually I tend to be doing sort of 20 to 40 images. So this is almost, this is sort of like 5 to 2 times as large as most of the style sets that I do because I tend to curate the images pretty damn hard so you don't have like thousands and thousands of images that aren't really that great um, it tends to learn really well nowadays so but yeah it says it's going to be an hour and a half so I, I take I take that with a pinch of salt um, and uh, just let it run basically but yeah I'll put this model up once it's done so you can have a little play around with it it will be called uh djz space war v15 or uh, 256 kappa says he wanted to teach 12,000 pictures it would take five days on his laptop yeah do you know what i wanted to do the civ ai model uh for f king but the problem was that there was so many images there were 60,000 images and literally google drive was just like ha, ha, what are you doing nope and uh and it basically just lagged out and went nah mate you can't do that I, it actually linked me to a support article that basically said there's too many images in one folder mate get fucked so um but yeah basically what i'm gonna do is i'm probably gonna just split them into individual folders because i know that works i can I, i'm pretty sure i can just do what i did before split them into separate folders like i don't know like 120 folders of 500 images each should probably do it but it's going to take a little bit of prep work to get that done um but yeah that's the plan because uh, all of the images were captioned all of the images so it doesn't matter if you break them up it'll be fine you know it's just a bit of extra work and i had other stuff on the table like all the open poses and things so uh let's see where are we at we're at 53 minutes so we got seven more seven minutes to close out the hour we may as well go for the full hour so um Let's take a look at some other stuff that I've been doing, shall we? Because you guys are awesome and you're still here. So, on an unlisted video, on a dead YouTube channel, because that's it. You guys are hardcore. So, yeah, if you guys have heard about this, this is called uh, JoJo's Bizarre Pose Helper, which is basically a collection of poses. So, let me just uh, put this into version 1 mode so you can see the poses. So version one was the initial release. And so what we've done is we've taken some iconic poses from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure season one, and we've converted them to skeletons, which are then uh, able to be loaded into something called control net open pose. And then that can be used to generate some really cool images uh, using these skeletons. OK, now, if you're wondering what the hell is control net, First of all, you're going to need Automatic's web UI, um, which looks like this. And you can run that on a collab or you can run it on your own computer. You don't actually need a giant graphics card, guys. OK, but you can learn about that on their GitHub. So we assume that you've already got that. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be watching this video in the first place. Um, Yes, yes, this is the this is the curb stomp uh, Dio doing a curb stomp right now. Um, and uh, that's actually uh, Jojo doing a karate jump towards the camera. <laughs> but uh, the, the AI looks at this like a bit of a 2D silhouette. So you never really know what you're going to get. It depends on what model you're using. 
Um, running, obviously, running works great. Uh, little sort of gestures and uh, leaning back. You know, you got to get those memes in there. So that's the skeletons, right? So the actual download contains a zip with all of these images. And what you do is you drop those images. I'll just give you a quick demo here. It's uh, pretty, pretty, pretty simple, actually. So we're going to take a questionable one. Uh, let's see. Yep, that'll do. Uh, yeah, that'll do. So you'd put your prompt, you put your negative prompt, you choose your sampler, you choose your steps, you choose your resolution. Obviously, if you already have an image, you can just drop that into the ping info and then send it to text to image to save yourself some time. But that would be a generative image you've already made. So from scratch, you fill out all of this stuff and then you come down to the control net section. Now, this is an extension. but It's actually really easy. You just go to extensions, install from URL and you copy the URL to their GitHub and hit install and then apply and restart done. You can find the links. Uh, no, that's Danger Moose. So what we'll do is just go back here and go to this one. And you would have already got the models as well. So we've got open pose. You can get them on Civit AI as well. I'm going to hit enable. Uh, that's all you have to do. Enable and use the open pose on the model. You can get the model on Civit. Chuck that in there. And then I could literally, I've got Dream Shaper loaded. Let's just do one real quick while we're waiting for this to go off. So we'll say here, here, let's just fill this out real quick. So I'm going to use 768 by 768. I'm going to go to extras. I'm going to pick 512 by 512. And then we'll go to the high res fix. We'll pick 8 and we'll pick. 0.4 and then we'll go to swin ir and then we'll go to 1.667 okay so this is going to generate at the base of 512 which is what 1.5 is it's a 512 model so we've got this resize from width we've got it on random seed and we've decided to sort of put it up just a little bit a little bit bigger 50 percent and then finally we're going to push it up by 1.667 that takes it to 1280 by 1280 which is a nice size if we were to double that again we're over four megapixel, which is a nice, nice, tasty. Anyway, so if I say anime one, so it always going to be we're going to be weighted, and then I'm just going to say woman, woman dancing. How about that? Woman dancing, and we'll say danger hawk. What point five? These are textual negative textual inversions that I've made, and then uh, danger mouse. 1.5 these are just values that i know work that i've been using a lot lately you can choose whatever values that you want and uh then we're going to use a oh no i've turned that off so i can't do that easily so yeah normally i'd use a wild card there but it's fine just leave that there yeah just leave that and then with any luck we'll get an image this is the point where it says you haven't even switched it on mate what you're trying to do Nope, it's making the image. So now we're going to get an image. How are we doing on time? 58 minutes and 47 seconds. Okay, that's looking pretty sweet. And there we go. I'll blow it up in a sec. In fact, let's just show you that. Let's just show you that image. I'm all over the place. It's just basically upscaling it now for me. Okay, so this would be the original image which came out of the generator. It's pretty good considering it just came out the generator. And as you can see, it used this skeleton to generate the image. A pretty good job, I would say, actually. Yeah, it's been a little bit interpretive with the with the legs. Um, but that's fine, you know. You want it to give you a little bit of variety. Okay. So 
got one minute and 30 until it actually finishes the full size image and that's an hour so we're going to let this finish and then we'll sign off so if you got any questions for me ah multiple control net models do you know what we'll do that as a bonus because we've been going for an hour and we may as well right so once this image finishes i'll show you how to set that up so it's actually pretty easy uh to set that up um and there's a whole bunch of different ways that you could actually use that um uh, but um i'm not going to get i'm not going to cover it in depth i'll just show people how they can get started with that so while it's doing this i can show you the basics so if i go to settings and i go down to control net it says multi control net max models so we can actually put this up to 2 we can actually put it all the way up to 10 all right you can go crazy but let's just put it up to two for now all right to give you an idea of how this works so i don't want to click apply yet because it's gonna there we go yeah yeah we're good so if i click apply now it does require a restart so we're going to lose so let's just have a look at our finished finished image and as you can see that's a lot better than this one it's refined a lot of the details so if i blow that up Okay, now we can still do a lot of work in Photoshop and we can do some extra stuff to make this look even better. But for a 1280 by 1280 image, this is a great starting point. Okay. Um, obviously, you can do all kinds of other stuff, like, for example, going into additional networks, uh, going into the LoRa section. I would use something like Glitch Stick. I'd probably use uh, Johnson Desu 320E1. And then probably Wallop. My dog's out there making noise and being naughty. I'm going to have to go and get her in in a minute. So I'll have to go. But uh, that would be something. And then I'll probably do something like 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and 0.6. And then also, you've got to remember that some, like Wallop, uses Wallop as a trigger, and Glitch Stick also has a trigger. So you've got to remember to put your triggers in, because otherwise they won't they won't load. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, in fact, I'd probably put that up to like 0.8. And then let's just get a solid prompt real quick. So let's just get a solid prompt like human like robots gain consciousness. Hmm. Ah, uh, that'll do. Just whack that in there. Woman dancing in a world where. All right. Now it's not going to tokenize some of that, but I just like to add some, make some sense there. Human like robots gain consciousness. Do -do -do -do. And. Probably. Ah, uh, yeah. Monochrome. We don't want monochrome, so we don't want a black and white white image. So I'm going to take off the high res fix, so it does it quicker. And then I'm going to say I want the same seed. So it's going to be a different image because we've added words to the prompt, but this should do uh, make quite a big difference. actually going to throw that on the end to get my man Hirohiko Araki stick him in there as well um, and you know what while we're doing it we'll go with crazy expressions and crazy eyes because that's always fun Stick that in there. So you can see how you're kind of building a stack of LoRa's and you can have more negative embeddings as well from textual inversions. So here, look, her face isn't that great. So we'll do that again. It'll give us the same image pretty much. Um, you know what? We might just take crazy face as well. These are both triggers from the crazy expressions, LoRa. Um, so 
now it's going to give us a little bit more of a Jojo's Bizarre Adventure influence. And it's a bit more robotic as well, this one. Look at that. That's pretty cool. She's got like robot arms now. And definitely the face is better. You can tell that instantly. Now, if I was to put the high res fix on, it's going to denoise the image and gen it again. Make it even better. Mm hmm. Now, this is the same seed. We're just adding more, just building out the prompt at the moment. That's all we're doing, just building it out. Okay. Definitely got the robot arms in this one. And you might think, well, that's all very well and good, but, you know, what's the point? And I'll say, well, how about this? Check this out, yeah? So if I now take... Uh, one of these super cool uh, poses. All right, so that's what we've got now. Face still isn't great, but I can guarantee you that if you upscale it, it's going to denoise and do something about that for you. If I shut this right here and change the uh, change the pose, it's going to give us a completely different scene. All right. Oh my God, what's going on? We're missing, we're missing, oh wait, no, it sorted itself out. Her face is completely screwed up though. But, oh no, there you go, it's sorting itself out. See, you got to have a little bit of faith. Have some faith. So, how are we looking? Now remember, these are quick gens that take like 10 seconds. When you do the high res, it's going to denoise the image and it's going to refill it in for you. It's going to get better. So, you know, never despair. Just keep on polishing it. And there's always Photoshop. So, like I said, what I would do is I'd go to high res fix and I'd go for about 0.4 on Swin IR. And uh, that's going to help. All right. So anyway, um, a note on the open poses. Often they'll come with JSONs. You can actually go into the pose editor, load the JSON, and then move the bones around. So you're not just stuck with the image that I've been dragging in there. It's uh, quite a dynamic system. You can make as many as you want. Uh, this is another extension that you install in the same way. Just drop in the URL there. Now, if you remember about five minutes ago, I set this control net. So let's go back to that now. I didn't forget about it. <laughs> yeah, it's Spider Queen, yeah. So I didn't go back. I didn't forget about this, all right? So we're going to refresh now if this doesn't change you might need to open up your cmd and change it here all right i don't know what i seem to be doing like this control c yes like that and off it goes and then when this starts up again we'll get our new ui fresh we can refresh it again and this will definitely be the last thing we're doing we've got two minutes and that'll make 70 minutes worth of tutorial but the thing is i will be doing a lot more videos like this but as i say they are always unlisted i don't really do a youtube anymore uh, i work as a consultant so i'm happy to share the love all right um but certainly um i don't do like uh subscribers and things like that as much as i used to i might be building a platform soon watch this space so anyway, I just like to give out the goods. So right, if I go to the settings, should be ready now. Don't break. There we go. So refresh that. Now we're going to see a difference when we open up our control net. And that is this. We've got control net zero and control net one. Okay, model zero, model one. And you've guessed it. We're going to pick something like canny and then enable. And then for this one, we're going to pick something like, what, not that. we're going to pick open pose and we're going to pick enable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to throw in. <laughs> OK, yeah, sure. Why not? We'll just put in this. Um, and then for this side, what should we do? Should we get something like, I don't know. I don't really have an example. Normally, you'd put another image in here, like of something. OK. Um, I mean, uh, ah, I know what to do. I could put an open pose in this side. That works. So 
let's put an open pose on this side, and then in this side, we'll put depth. <laughs> That'll work. <coughs> I think Kappa asked me why I use SDA Karis, and it's because it's faster when you're just making a little prototype. Because obviously you can take the seed of an image, put that here, and then put the, the high res later. So you don't need to spend like a full minute rendering an image every time. Okay, you can just do it quick, and then you can come back to the good ones. So that way you don't waste time upscaling images that didn't even need to be or deserve to be wasting your, your GPU time. So, um, yeah, we're going to get rid of that. So this is going to use a depth model on this, and it's going to use uh, a, a pose on this. So if I just say woman, <laughs> go. So what it's going to do is it's going to make uh, the pose first. Eventually, sometime soon, maybe, maybe. Uh -huh. It totally ignored that, by the way. <coughs> nice, nice. Didn't like that. Right, do you know what? It just made it just made woman, made woman, but it completely ignored me. So uh, let's just do that again. So open pose and fact, we'll go for the H E D, and then we'll put a canvas up, and we'll just go like like that with maybe a little bit of a nothing. Right. Figure it out, mate. Put it on guess mode for all I care. There you go. Figure it out, mate. I'm not impressed with you now. There we go. You're going to give me errors again? Ball ache. Come on, do something. Yep, yeah, it errored again. Control net is enabled, but no input image is given. It's lies. It's total lies. I gave you an image. Oh, crap. I got to invert it. Whatever. Whatever. Like I said, you've got to tweak this stuff. All I do is I use the opened up open pose. I don't mess around with the uh, multi. I was messing around with it yesterday to put hands on Bruce Lee. And that worked great. I probably should have just showed you that. But um, let's leave something for the next time, eh? So I'd say that we've done enough. We're over time, but I enjoy it. So that's the main thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sort of leave it here. But thank you for watching. I hope this has been useful to you. Definitely scroll back and like, you know, pause it, take screenshots, whatever you need to do. Um, and yeah, this has been fun. See you next time. We're going to be looking at the Koya, fast Koya trainer. And this is by Linacruff. So just to recap, all right, we went to the Linacruff GitHub. So the first thing I recommend you do is immediately save a copy in Drive. I'm going to run down this without, without clicking anything. You click the buttons, okay, in order. So we'd mount the drive, and then it's going to go to, uh, we're going to fill it out first, remember. Okay, going to do install track Xformers. That's for real. We're going to say here, my Laura. You can put whatever name you want there. Okay. For the training uh, directory, once we have signed into our G drive, we can open this folder and there'll be a list here. One of them is going to say G drive. You can open it up and then you can right click copy path on the folder which contains your images. So I'm just going to go into my drive. And we're going to scroll past all the secret waifu folders. Nah, there's none here, guys. So we're just going to go to the Kappa training data. And we're going to find something cool. We're going to do Space War. Because Space War is super cool. Space War has 100 images, pretty much. Has 100 images. All right? And uh, you'd normally have to do so many. So what I'm going to do is right-click, copy path. Okay? 
and then I'm going to type in here. I'm going to say space space war, and we're going to say dash. It's a hundred images, so I'm going to use two fifty six uh, space war two fifty six, and it's going to be uh, v fifteen chaos. Yeah, we should have done the chaos. Okay, so content training. So now I'm going to copy that path right there. So space war one thousand twenty four, and then we're going to use the dream booth method. All of these images are tagged space war. Now this is a style model, not an object model. So I don't need to do any captions. So I'm cheating a little bit. So the instance is space war. We've already done the 1.5. We've got the VAE. We're not going to use the tagger. We're going to change this to 256 because that's my choice there. We've gone over 100 pretty much. So we're going to say 256 but it's on the borderline of needing to be really uh you could get away with 128 with this but i'm going to say 256 all right we're going to leave everything else because we already set linear here we already put the warm up to 200 so that's fine we don't need this it's at 512 we've got the noise offset of 0 0.1 we've got the train batch at four we've set everything correctly so that means all we got to do is press go now, the first time you do this, it might seem a little overwhelming, but honestly, all you really had to do was mount your drive, put the name in, put the path for your data set, which is on your Google Drive anyway, okay? Name it. If you want to use a, uh, if you want to use a, a, a token, put the name of the token in, all right? Uh, make sure that this is the correct base model which is just a question of going to Hugging Face and pulling it, you could use anything that you like from there, okay? Auto captioning if you want, because you're lazy and you didn't do that, but I recommend doing it yourself. Keep going. Select your dimensions. I would recommend 128 and 128 if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, leave everything the same. Pick linear. If it's a version 2 model, 2.1, check this and this. Put it to 768 for 2.1768. Leave it at 512 if you're, and you don't need V parameterization if you're on the version 2 512 model, right? Set the noise offset, highly recommended. Um, and I think, I think that was it. I don't think we've actually changed anything else. And then fire it up. And then what it's going to do is it's going to run through all this stuff, okay? And it's going to start making our model um, and uh, just let it run, basically. But yeah, I'll put this model up once it's done so you can have a little play around with it. It will be called uh, DJZ Space War V15 or uh, 256. Okay, just a quick addendum here. So I retrained the whole thing on a big G big premium GPU with 10 batch and that took 15 minutes and 26 seconds for the whole run i found that when it finished making the model it actually put it inside the content area of the collab um how i fixed that uh there will be a show code button so we'll click on the show code there it is so output directory and all i've done is i have put in a path from my google drive so I don't know if they're going to fix that in the future, most likely. But regardless, if you finish this training and then close it, you'll lose it, which isn't ideal. So what I did was I just changed this line of code here. It's quite easy to find because it has all this. This whole block here is quite unique. And all you have to do is copy the path for where you want the models to be saved in between these two quotes. And then that will save. For me, it was my drive training directory output, but you can use any any directory after the my drive part there. OK, um, and then what that'll do is when you hit when you hit run, it's going to train your model and the intermediate steps. It's going to put them in there for you. So if something happens, you've got all of those there. And when it finishes, you can just close this with disconnect and delete runtime and you're good to go. So. Just wanted to point that out. Uh, have a good time training. Hit me in the comments. And remember, the full version of this video 
is actually uh, in the description of this video because this is the short version that I'm going to put on the model pages. So if you want the full hour-long version, which has got all of the details and a bunch of extra information, just go ahead and uh, check that out. It's in the uh, description for this one. So thanks very much, and I'll see you soon.